Hey Energizer, thank you for tuning in to today's episode of The Jones and Four Show. I am super excited to have you here. So first of all, thank you so much for giving your time, your energy to be here right now listening or watching The Jones and Four Show. Know that I truly appreciate you, you and your energy, your love, your light. And I just have to say thank you. So thank you so much for being here. Now, today's episode, we are talking about affirmations. And not just affirmations, we're talking about the science behind it. Well, okay, I'll be honest, there's a lot of science behind affirmations as of the past 10, 15 years. Um, so we're going to dive into some of it. We're going to scratch the surface to give you some ideas about affirmations. Are they real? Are they bogus? How can you do them? How can you get the most out of them? We are going to talk about that right now. So if you are ready to learn more about affirmations, to increase your energy, to increase the good things, the amazing things in your life, if you're ready for that, keep listening. Because now, oh man, oh man, this is going to be good. So let's dive in. But first, I need, to, I need my sip of coffee because I love coffee. It's so good. Okay. I know we're only like a minute and a half in or so, and I'm already drinking coffee. It happens. I love my coffee. It's okay. It's okay. You can have some coffee, some tea. Feel free. Grab maybe a water or coffee, tea. Have a seat. Enjoy it. If you're driving, working out, running, maybe don't drink coffee or tea when you're running. That could be kind of hard, but water works. Water, water's okay. Okay, so let's let's get to the the deep part of this, right? The meat of it. We're just going to dive right in. Science and affirmations. Are affirmations real or are they bogus? Well, which one is it? Do you know? Well, in my opinion, and in science's opinion, <clears throat> they're real. That's right. Affirmations are real. They are things that actually have merit. They're not just a bunch of woo-woo, a little bit of crazy stuff over here that you can just throw off the side. Well, I mean, you could just throw it out, I guess, if you want but you're throwing out something valuable, something good, something that can help you live your life to the max. And that's why we don't throw them out. So you can already probably hear, I am amped up today. I am ready to rock and roll to have this amazing conversation with you. So I, I hope you're, you're feeling this high energy and uh, ready to keep rocking and rolling. So what are affirmations? Let's be crystal clear about what affirmations are first and foremost before we jump into the whole thing. Affirmations are short sentences that we say to help change our conscious and subconscious mind so we can improve our lives, right? We can be better. We can be happier. They're usually I am statements. So statements like I am strong. I am worthy. I am enough, right? I am a successful businessman or businesswoman or entrepreneur or whatever. Affirmations are amazing in so many ways, right? Because they put out to the universe, to God, the universe, whatever you choose to believe, this energy, this energy of this is who I am, this is where I'm going, and then you're calling it into you, right? This law of attraction, the idea where you're putting out this energy and it comes back to you. So now, not only uh, are affirmations, we'll talk about the science behind it, let's talk about the energy behind it. Because the entire world, the entire universe, is energy, right? My thoughts are energy. My words are energy. The window behind me, the chair I'm sitting at, it's all energy. And that energy is love. It all vibrates. So let's look down at a cellular level real quick. It all starts with energy. Even your thoughts. To have a thought, you need to have energy right? To be able to move those cells, to fire the, the neurons and all that, you need energy. Everything breaks down to energy. And there's different levels of energy, but it's all energy. And all energy is love. I know, mind-blowing, right? We're not even five minutes in this. Mind-blowing. Love is energy. Energy is love. It's incredible. It truly is. And, and maybe you don't believe that. And that's okay if you don't. Um, I, for me, I do. I, I believe that, right? That's why I'm saying it and sharing it with you. 
So let's jump back into affirmations now. So when you say an affirmation, let's say I am strong. Well, let, let's change it. Let's do I am inspiring. So when I say I am inspiring, that's my affirmation to myself. So I'm telling myself I am inspiring. So now I'm reinforcing it it to myself saying, I am inspiring, right? I hear it. I, I, he I hear myself say it. I feel my mouth form the words. I feel the vibrations go out as I speak it. And then obviously I hear it come back, reinforcing the fact that I am inspiring. And at the end of this episode, I'll share how I would personally do my affirmations and suggest a, a strategy that you can use uh, I mean, feel free to take this the way I use it and use it yourself, right? So you can maximize your affirmation practice. So affirmations are real, right? They involve energy. There's science behind it. So let's stop just hinting about science. Let's dig into the science approaches. So get this. There has been actually MRI evidence right? MRI evidence that suggests that um, certain neural pathways increase when people practice self-affirming uh, tasks, right? So when you, when you do your self-affirmations, when you say your affirmations, there's neurological pathways that increase, that improve, that get better just by saying your affirmations, right? And that's by Casio et al. in 2016, Holy cow. How cool is that? Just by saying the affirmations, now your brain is building stronger, bigger, and better pathways. How freaking awesome is that? Now, there's more than that, right? As I said, we're just going to scratch the surface on a couple studies here that I wanted to share with you because when I started digging into affirmations and the science behind it, it's a rabbit hole. You can go down, 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 down. And I want to share with you because, you know, affirmations are great. I love them. I think they're huge and such an amazing tool we all should use in our life. But they get such a bad rap, right? Affirmations get such a bad rap. I don't know where it came from. I know it was roughly like 70s and 80s where people started to go, oh, that's woo-woo. That's a bunch of hogwash, right? But it works. And now there's actually science to back it up. Some from the 60s, some from the 80s, mostly the 2000s and up, right? But there's science to back this stuff up. It's not woo-woo. It actually helps, and it can change your life. So one of the things that the research behind it is that um, affirmations are part of the self-affirming theory, and that's by Steele in 1988. It's so one of those 1980s uh, research projects, right? So the self-affirmation theory. And this is how this theory goes, or the self-affirming theory. And this theory has three points to it. And I agree with all these points. Some of them, I'll describe why I've just a little bit of, not issue, but a little hold up with it. But the first one I don't have any issue with. And that is that when it, the self-affirming theory, the first part of it is a global narrative. So it is a global narrative. Well, a global narrative is the narrative you are telling yourself, that story you are telling yourself about yourself. So you're, what you're telling yourself, right? That story you are, are sharing to yourself. Not what you necessarily portray to the world, although that too to a degree, it's what you tell about yourself. So the fact that you're good, you're flexible, you have good morals, right? You're nice, you're kind, you're inspiring, you're successful, all those things, right? That's your narrative. Some people, myself included at times, and especially a couple of years ago when I was in my dark spot, my dark area, that, that I told myself, I suck. I'm worthless. I'm weak. Who am I? I can't do this. I'm not good. I'm stupid. We word and say those things in that narrative that degrade us, that lower our vibration. What good does that do? That's only belittling you. That's only lowering your vibration, your awesomeness. It's putting like shades over the, that light, right? It's like trying to hide it. We don't want you to hide. We don't want you to uncover and share your beautiful light with the world. So using affirmations, you could shift that global narrative, that story you're telling yourself, one from, from negativity to positivity, okay? And so within this global narrative, that story we're telling ourselves, we work on our self-identity. 
right? And so when you, what is your self-identity? How do you identify yourself? Are you a person who is growing, who embraces change, who is willing to be flexible when needed, positive, you know, moral, all those things? Or are you a person who has a fixed mindset, who's like, nope, an obstacle came up, this roadblock came up, boom, I'm done. Nope, I can't fix it. It's, it's what it is, nothing can be done. As opposed to going, oh, well, hold on, let's, let's adjust. Let's reevaluate, let's keep moving and growing. It's a person who has a fixed mindset as opposed to that growth mindset. How do you self-identify? Are you a jerk? Are you kind? Are you friendly? Do you hate or do you love? How do you identify? Now, what's interesting, let's dive into this self-identity just a little bit more because uh, self-identity can be huge, right? It's, it's how we view the different aspects of ourself. How do you view the, the different aspects of yourselves as positive and adaptive? Or are they negative, right? If we look at Aronson from 1969, they dove into that self-identity. And basically, they describe self-identities that view different aspects of ourselves as positive and adaptive, right? That's if we want to be on the good side of it, right? To have a positive self-identity. So what are the good things? Are we adaptive? Can we be flexible, right? That's pretty crazy. It's cool. That was from 1969. There's still the research and stuff. Heck, there's stuff from before that too. Now let's keep going with this self-identity. Now um, I want to make sure I get all my points in here. I'm just making sure I check my sheet because I don't want to miss a single one. Um, it maintains self-integrity through affirmations. So your self-identity, you can maintain that integrity of your identity through your affirmations. So I'll say that again. You can. You can maintain your integrity of the identity you created in your story, right? In that narrative through affirmations. So now uh, a study by Cohen and Sherman in 2014 put, said this, that self-integrity relates to your global self-efficacy. So your self-integrity relates to your global self-efficacy, which is your ability to control your moral outcomes and respond flexibly where our self-concept is threatened. So when your idea of self is threatened, when you feel threatened, right, triggered, whatever you want to say, when you feel that, then you can re uh, respond flexibly, be adaptive, be adjusting, and fit within your moral outcome. So as opposed to uh, like a negative one, like if, if you're triggered, if something happens, and all of a sudden you just lash out in anger, well, that's not, that's not helpful. That doesn't fit your global narrative of being kind, of being generous, of being loving. That's a negative. So your self-integrity and self-efficacy, that can work together, right? With the affirmation, like, okay, well, let's respond differently so we can maintain that narrative that we're sharing and telling ourselves. Because guess what? You are what you tell yourself. If you think, well, I shouldn't say you are what you tell yourself, right? If you tell yourself you're an apple, you're, you're not an apple. But if you tell yourself you, you're, you're a jerk, you're mean, you're, you're unkind, are you those things? Well, no. I don't think you are those things, but you might have those tendencies. But if you tell yourself you're loving, you're kind, you're generous, are you those things? Well, you're, hu you're a spiritual being having a human experience, but you can portray those qualities. You can portray the qualities of that story that makes this world a better place. Are you here on earth to have a better experience, to make earth and this human experience we're having better for people? For you. Are you moving that flag farther down the field so that that you're the next generation, whether it's your kids or maybe you don't have kids, and you know, are, are you moving that down the field so that they can have a better life? What are you doing? What story are you trying to fit in and make happen? Use affirmations to help you with that. So that's the first portion, the first out of three for the self-affirming theory is your global narrative. Hey, sorry to butt in like this, but I have something really cool I want to share with you. Something that I know, I know it can help you live your life to the max. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a roadmap. A roadmap that gets you to your destination. What do roadmaps do, right? Well, you have your destination. It shows you how to get there. The best way to get to that point. And you know what? That's what I have. What is this roadmap I'm talking about? 
talking about my book, Chase Your Passion. That's right, you have a passion, you have a destination, you have goals, dreams you want to achieve, but maybe you're confused on how to get there. Maybe you're feeling stuck. Well, my book, Chase Your Passions, is that roadmap. It guides you through how to create that plan, how to create that roadmap, how to get over hurdles so you can have success. So if you're ready to ditch the excuses, if you're ready to get unstuck and ready to have success, to taste success and feel amazing, to achieve your goals and dreams, get your copy of Chase Your Passions. It's available on Amazon or just head to my website, spencermjones.com. All right, let's catch y'all later and let's keep chasing our passions. Let's go. Okay, the other two we won't go down into the rabbit holes as much, but the second uh, part of the global, uh, I'm sorry, of the self-affirming theory, right, by Steele in 1988 is to not, uh, this is interesting, right, to not be exceptional or perfect, but instead be uh, competent and adequate in the different areas you value. Now, here's the thing. I agree with this, but it's a harsh one, so it's hard to agree with it. So not to be exceptional or perfect, because guess what? No one's perfect. We all make mistakes. We're all human. We all make mistakes. No one's perfect. And anything you try to do is not perfect, because guess what? We have different views of what perfect is. What I see as perfect, you might not see as perfect. What you might see as perfect, I might not, or the next person. And that's okay. It's okay that we have that. Now, if you're a perfectionist, oh, I'm sorry to tell you, it's not going to be perfect. Nothing's going to be perfect. And I know that drives you crazy, but you have to let go of that perfection, of that tendency. Let it go, right? You, you, you could sing Frozen all you want, but let it go because it's not serving you. As a matter of fact, it's holding you back. So instead of having it be perfect, be flexible, be adaptive. And so in this theory, right, uh, that second part of it, they say not to be exceptional and perfect, but instead be competent and adequate in areas, in different areas that you value. So what are areas in your life that you value? Be competent in them. Know them. The word adequate kind of bothers me. I'd rather say good than adequate, right? Adequate seems lower on the scale than good. But are you good at, do you, are you, can you do those things? Are you adequate? Can you pass them? Are, do you know this stuff? Can you be an expert in it? Sure, that's awesome. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect, but you know the areas you value and you dive into those. And you explore those and you grow with those and you're competent in those. And that's okay, right? So the self-affirming theory is not to be perfect in an area because you're never going to reach perfection, ever. There's always something that can be improved. But can you be competent in it? Can you be good in it? Strive for that, not perfection. The third part of the self-affirming theory is to act in ways that authentically, or sorry, we act in ways that we authentically uh, merit acknowledgement. So we act in ways that authentically merit acknowledgement. When I first read this, I was like, wait, what? Authentically merit acknowledgement. I was like, holy crap. But I don't always want a pat on the back. I don't always want people to recognize me. I mean, maybe. But then I thought about this. And I said, you know what, Spencer, we do. We want people to notice these things, these good things about us. But this theory, this idea is, is not saying it in the sense that we're doing, we're not saying these affirmations, we're not doing these things so that we can get that pat on the back. It's not about that. It's not about we're doing it for the sake of getting the pat on the back. Instead, we are saying these affirmations because we truly want to resonate with that affirmation. We want to resonate with it. And then as we're living that out, then people will see it and they'll acknowledge it and they'll give us a pat on the back. But we're not doing it for that pat on the back, for that recognition. Instead, we're doing it for the merit, for the value of that action itself. So let's give you, let's give you an example. Let's say your affirmation is, I am a responsible parent. I am a responsible parent. Cool. So you take the actions, you make the decisions that allow you to be that responsible parent. And you feel good. 
because you're doing the actions, you're taking the things you need to do to be that responsible parent, right? Awesome, go you. You're doing those things. You're not do, trying to be a responsible parent so other people go, hey, look at them, they know what they're doing, they're really responsible. You're not doing it for that shout out, for that call, for that pat on the back. You're doing it because you know it's good for your kid and it feels good to you. And it fits that theory, or sorry, that, that global narrative that you're telling yourself that you are a responsible parent, right? It fits that narrative. So now people go, hey, look, they're being really good. They're a great parent. They come up to you, hey, you're, you're awesome at parenting, right? Fantastic job, right? You're like, oh, you're a responsible parent. That's great. Thank you, right? They come up to thank you. How cool is that? And that's what that's saying. You act in ways that authentically merit acknowledgement. Not faking it, not searching for it, but authentically. Authentically get that acknowledgement. How cool is that? Affirmations can be huge. They can change your life so much for the better, in my opinion. When I started saying my affirmations, and you know, I used to feel like it was a bunch of woo-woo and thought it was ridiculous, and I, I didn't believe in them. And then I started questioning life and growing and doing a lot of personal development. And then when I heard affirmations again, I said, you know what, let's give these a fair shake. Instead of just, just saying whatever and forget about it, let's give them a fair shake. And so I did. And then as I kept going with it, I realized, holy cow, this is incredible. This is amazing. Things are coming my way. This law of attraction works. I'm doing things. I'm being the person I want to be. I'm happier. I'm filled with more energy. So incredible. Just by saying these affirmations. Know that when you start you're saying your affirmations, it's not like an instant turnaround. It's not you say it one day and later that day or the next day something happens. It takes time. It takes time, right? You're shifting that global narrative, but it, it can be huge. And before I share my strategy with you of how I do affirmations, here are some benefits about it, right? So affirmations, if you practice affirmations and you keep it going, it's not a quick thing, but if you keep it going, right? You, it helps you, I can, uh, can talk, wow. It can help you reduce stress, help you ruminate less, right? To dwell on those thoughts. It can help you change behavior, right? The unwanted behavior in your life. It can help you develop a growth mindset or be more optimistic or, you know, even boost your self-esteem. Heck, it can potentially heal you. If you ever get a chance, look into the story of Louise Hay. Louise Hay, she was incredible. I believe she had stage four cervical cancer. Don't quote me on that, but I believe she had stage four cancer. And she believes... I think this was back in the 80s. She believes that her the affirmations, that energy work she did, healed her. It's worth checking out that story. And if, you know, we put our faith into love, into this energy, into believing in ourselves and what we're capable of, heck, then we're only scratching the surface, only hair deeper than what we could actually go. Because you are incredibly powerful. You are a person who can change the world just by sharing your light. But first we got to change ours. And that's where the affirmation comes in. So we could change that narrative. We can make it whole and not just change it, but then keep growing and building it and impacting and changing our life and everyone else's. So here's how I practice my affirmations. Here's what I do. I don't stand in front of a mirror and say them. If you can, or if you want to, great, go for it, right? You see yourself say it, so it's even more um, uh, impactful for you. I just don't do it. But for me, I say my affirmations three times, okay? So I say it, and I say it out loud. I don't say it in my head. I say it out loud. That way I feel myself saying it, right? I feel the words being formed. I hear myself saying it, and it just makes that connection that much deeper. But then I add one more layer on top of it. So I say my affirmation. Let's say um, I am inspiring. Let's keep that one. So I go, I am inspiring. And then I breathe in. 
And in that inhale, I think of a time in my life where I was inspiring. Whatever your affirmation is, right? If you want to be a successful businesswoman, where were you successful before? All right? I, t I think about that affirmation. Where was this happening before? It doesn't have to be at that same level or the same scale. It could be anything, all right? Where was I inspiring? So then I think, oh, back when I was choir directing, I know I inspired this kid at this moment. Oh, okay, so then I say my affirmation again. I am inspiring. And I breathe in again, and I find a different moment where I was inspiring. And then I say it again with even more gusto. I am inspiring. And then guess what? As I breathe in, I think of a third time that I was inspiring. And I do that for all of my affirmations. Sure, it takes a little time, but I'm putting out the energy, more energy to the universe. And now, not only am I just saying it to the universe, I'm giving it a little more gusto every time, and then I'm, I'm getting, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm giving more energy by having those memories come back and tying it in. So now I'm going, I'm not lying. I'm not kidding myself. I've had those things. It might not be exactly where I want to be yet, but I know I already am those things. Now I'm just making it bigger. My friend Tasha Danvers, she's a two-time Olympian. She uses affirmations in the Olympics. Now she teaches people about affirmations and how to use them. And she suggested to me and share with, uh, with me and with um, some of our folks in our deep dive, positivity deep dive, about using these stepping stones. And you might have heard me talk about these before. So in affirmations, she says, if some people struggle, it, like they don't believe in them or believe that they, they believe they're lying to themselves, she said, use these stepping stones. So uh, things like, I am learning to be a successful entrepreneur, right? I am, uh, I am practicing to become inspiring. I don't know if that one really works, but you get the idea. It's these stepping stones saying, hey, not there yet, but you're becoming this. You're leading your way there. But she also warns to not stay there that long. Don't stay there for hours and hours, or sorry, for days and days and days and days. Maybe two weeks. Maybe two weeks. But after that, get rid of them. Because they're just stepping stones. Right? When, when you're first learning to ride a bike, right? And you have the training wheels on. You don't still have training wheels on your bike. You took them off because you outgrew them. Don't use these stepping stones all the time. Get rid of them. Use them for a week or two. And then both start to believe that you are those things because guess what? You are. You are. So there you go. Affirmations. They are real. They are not bogus. It's energy you're sharing out to the universe. And we have the science to back it up that it's changing your neurological pathways. The self-affirming theory amplifies what you are doing the changes narrative about yourself right to know that you are amazing you are incredible and you are enough never doubt that never doubt that okay with that i'm going to let you go and i hope you have an amazing day start doing affirmations if you haven't done them ever before start today come up with affirmations things that you want in life things that you are things that you want to grow in Share those, say those, and believe it. Keep it going because you will start seeing some amazing changes in your life. All right, please like and share. I truly appreciate you. And remember, constantly live your life to the max. You are always enough, no matter what. You always have and always will be enough. So thank you so much. And you know, if you missed last week's episode, don't worry about it. Here's just a little snippet so you can get a taste. Go back and check it out. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Keep living your life to the max. I'm super excited for this because I, we have an amazing special guest joining you today, you and I today, here in our studios. We have Melissa Hergertz from Brain Train Center joining us, and she's going to talk about how our brain works, how, how we don't use it properly in so many ways. All right, so quick, quick explanation of what neurofeedback is. A lot of people may have heard of something called biofeedback. It's been around for many, many years, but this is a form of biofeedback directly for the brain waves. So it's been around since the 60s. It was created for seizure disorders, and then they realized it can help a lot of other neurological symptoms like ADHD, insomnia, anxiety, 
concussions, things like that. So all those things can be as young as a bait. It could be from being in the womb that could affect your brain. A lot of people, uh, a lot of energizers struggle with anxiety. I've noticed in my conversations with them, they struggle with just being anxious about going to the store at times, or especially with COVID, right? Yeah, being sick and understandable uh, fears and that and stuff that they're struggling and going through. I'll have people that come to my office that say, I've tried everything. I've tried breathing. I've tried guided meditation. I've tried all this. And that's because their brain is just so stuck in that over aroused state that it truly needs like a physical feedback to retrain it. Gotcha.